is video for week seven. No, it's test Thursday. Now keep in mind, these are all molecular or covalent compounds. Polar compounds dissolve in water and nonpolar compounds do not. Why water is polar? So water, if we do the Lewis structure for water, you're gonna learn why we draw it like this. Uh, that is polar, why? Because it's non-symmetrical or because oxygen pulls those electrons more. Therefore, it is a positive and negative end, but we'll be practicing a lot. Nonpolar compounds dissolve in nonpolar compounds, so oil dissolves in oil. And uh, again, we're going through all this in class. These are standard rules for strong Lewis structures, but uh, again, like you probably have noticed, this is just essentially how I say it. Uh, we're also going to do expanded octet. And uh, I don't know the rules of these, but this is how I'm going to state it. It's, there's no double bond, so the rules have to be very similar. So you're going to see what you have to do, and you're going to be given this sheet here. So this is something I won't be giving you because, again, I'm the mean teacher. But you know that fluorine has the highest electronegativity and francium does not. And we can see as it moves away from fluorine, electronegativity goes down. So watch this, fluorine, down, 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 down. So we're gonna see why you gotta know this and it worked. Now, here is an example of a nonpolar and a polar compound. So, I mentioned before that a polar compound, and we'll start with the nonpolar. So, carbon dioxide, Lewis structure looks like this, and it's a symmetrical compound. We'll think of it like this. Oxygen is pulling the electrons in the middle that way. So electronegativity is the pull on shared electrons. So remember that electronegativity is the pull on shared electrons. Oxygen is pulling those electrons that way. And the other oxygen is pulling the electrons that way. And those oxygens are equally as strong. And so in a tug of war contest, between oxygen and oxygen, and let's say that carbon is the flag in the middle. That carbon's not moving anywhere. So there's no net charge compared to water, like this. And let's start off with water with just somewhat of a normal Lewis structure that you're used to. So bond outside atoms using two, two, and so this is a Lewis structure. Now keep in mind when you have two atoms and two lone pairs, the atoms go on the same side. Hence, this would be wrong. Because this sort of looks symmetrical, but water is very polar. So when you have two bonds and two lone pairs, the two goes on the same side. So oxygen is pulling. Oxygen has a higher electronegativity pulling those electrons that way. Therefore, there's a negative charge on one end because electrons are negative and a positive charge on the other end or like this you can do. So that is a polar molecule, but we'll have a lot of practice. You can sort of look at these and tell if it's polar or nonpolar. We have water, H2O, that's polar, it's asymmetrical. So water will dissolve in water. Ammonia, if we drew the Lewis structure for that, N. This is sort of a 3D thing. This is just from your lab. Look at that. We, we definitely see a asymmetry there. And then methane, if we drew the Lewis structure, it's like this, CH4. That is symmetrical. So that's going to be nonpolar. 
All right, so let's do a couple that are in your lab. Uh, this one's already done. So now here we have carbon tetrafluoride. Carbon tetrafluoride, something you would have to name. Valence electrons, carbon is four, four and eight, seven, 28, 32. Let's draw the Lewis structure. On outside atoms first, we're using two electrons to make outside atoms happy first. And we use all 32 valence electrons. Amount of electron domain. How many things are touching the carbon? Electron domain would be something like this. So let's just do some examples. That X would have two electron domains. One thing's touching it there, another thing's touching it there. Now that X would have three domains. One, two, three. Or if I, even if I wrote a double bond, it is one domain. Hence, a domain, not that, a domain can equal two electrons. And I didn't show that, but I will. One bond, two bonds, or a triple bond. One, 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 one. So if it had all of these on it, four, it would add up to four. So CHCF4 has four domains. Now, the electron geometry, you have to go back to that sheet that I showed you that you're going to get. We have four domains. Electron geometry is tetrahedral. And you're going to see why in class this week and in lab this week. The molecular geometry, you'll notice that when there are no lone pairs, it is the same thing. And again, we're going to see in class this week and in lab this week. Oh, I'm horrible at these. All right, so now we have to draw the compound in a 3D form. Up that one towards and one away. This is horrible. This is, I'm better than that, even at this. But we're going to practice in lab. All right. So, is this polar or nonpolar? It is very symmetrical. So that's going to be nonpolar. And the polar bonds are different. The fluorine has the highest electronegativity. So, the polar bonds. The electrons are pulled that way, and there's four of them. And it says, draw a molecular dipole in your wedge, dash, unless if it's nonpolar. So it's nonpolar. So we're going to do more practice here, and we're going to practice in the lab. I'm just going to do a couple here because we're doing them in class. Uh, so the ammonia has eight valence electrons. If we draw the thingy, it looks like this. Number of domains, four. Electron geometry, it has four things attached to it. So it's tetrahedral. And it has one lone pair. Again, look at the sheet that you're getting. And it is trigonal pyramidal. And you're going to see why when we make them. And here... Eh. So one away. I don't know. I don't think I'm going to have you do these on the test. I'm bad at these. Okay, so something like that. This all polar bonds. Nitrogen has a higher electronegativity than hydrogen because it is closer to fluorine. So H to N, three of them. Then draw, I guess, yeah. well, you can still draw the dipole in a normal Lewis structure. So draw them. Uh, Molecular dipole on your wedge and dash diagram or write nonpolar. This is definitely a polar molecule because it's non symmetrical. And the reason is because nitrogen, there's A, you have nothing on top there, and nitrogen is pulling the electrons that way. Therefore, there is a positive charge 
away from the nitrogen. And since electrons are negative and nitrogen is pulling them, there's a negative charge on nitrogen. So that is the, uh, the molecular dipole molecule compared to polar bonds. All right, so I'm going to do two more. Uh, yeah, so H2O, we have eight valence electrons. Water, when you have two bonds and two lone pairs, you have to put the bonds on the same side. And the reason for that is due to certain geometry that we will see in class. Domains, four, electron geometry, tetrahedral. So I'm getting this from the sheet, or you get it from the sheet. And the molecular geometry is two bonds and two lone pairs, so it's bent. Wedge diagram is going to look like this, and you're going to see why when we build the molecules. List all polar bonds. Oxygen is stronger than, so I don't really care which way, whichever one you draw first, but it's stronger than hydrogen, electronegativity. And then this is a polar bond. Oxygen is stronger. The arrow is pointing towards oxygen because it has a higher electronegativity. Therefore, we have a negative charge here and a positive charge here. So that makes it a polar bond. So here, we got something called an expanded octet, meaning the center atom only will violate the octet rule. But just pay attention. I think these are really not too bad. So for a six, put in a seven, there's six of them, 42, 48. Sulfur center atom, we're going to bond outside atoms using two electrons. So that's 12 minus 12, we got 36. Make outside atoms. Yeah, there. Make outside atoms happy first. So we have six of them. If I put six on each, it's going to make them happy. So you can see that it's going to work out. Minus 36. Outside atoms fulfill octet rules. Center atom does not, but center atom can violate the octet rule. Number of valence electrons, we figured that out, 48. Electron domains, we got six. Electron geometry. So look at the sheet, and you'll see that if there are six uh, electron geometry or dense electron areas uh, or six electron domains, it is octahedral. And since there's no lone pairs, it is also octahedral. Oh boy, I got to draw the thingy for this. Okay, draw the wedge diagram. This one I think I can do. You'll see when you make this compound, you have a sulfur up, fluorine, fluorine, and then you got one away, fluorine. Maybe I can have you do the wedge diagrams. If I give you that sheet, like every student I've ever had has been better at drawing things than me. And this is the wedge diagram, something away, something towards. It's all polar bonds. Fluorine is the strongest, so we know it's going to be the S to F, six of them. And then if it's nonpolar. So does this look symmetrical? Yes. All these Fs are pulling the sulfur in opposite and equal, equal and opposite directions. Therefore, that sulfur wouldn't go anywhere. It would not have any net charge. So this is going to be nonpolar. So I'm just going to do a couple organic compounds, meaning molecular compounds, essentially, but a little like with the carbon chain. So here we have the carbons are the center atoms. The hydrogens are the outside atoms. And the chlorine is right there. Now, these are always going to pass the octet rule on Lewis structure. So I know this is right. But if you want to count up the valence electrons, carbon has eight, or carbon has four times two, plus five hydrogen, chlorine has seven. 
that adds up to 1220. If you count these valence electrons, everything fulfills the octet rule. Hydrogen fulfills the duet rule, so that has to be right. And so this would be the thingy. So now here we have ethanol. Ethan alcohols and an OH. And if we tried to put all of these on the center atom, there's no place for a hydrogen. So keep in mind when it ends in OL, ethanol, it's going to have an OH on it. Therefore, I'm just going to draw the middle two carbons and draw the hydrogens. And then I'm going to have the ethanol on it or the alcohol on it. If we count it up, valence electrons, 4 plus 6 plus 6, 12, 16. If we added up those electrons, it's going to be a, uh, it's going to add up to 16. Everything follows the octet rule. And that alcohol is like that. And we couldn't put that oxygen on the carbon without doing it this way. Here is an expanded octet. We got BRF5. So all these are halogen metals. So six. These are 42 valence electrons. BR, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's 12. Nope, there's five. BR, one, two, three, four, five. F, 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 F. So 42 valence electrons minus 10, 32, 32. Make outside atoms happy first. One, two, da, 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 da. Minus five times six, 30. We got two left. So the only thing that can violate the octet rule is the center atom. So I'm going to put the remaining electrons on the center atom. This is polar because of those two remaining electrons. So therefore, it's no longer symmetrical. If we didn't have those, it would be symmetrical. Um, and so, um, yeah. The uh, electron, so you can look in your sheet, but the electron configuration is triggered by pyramidal. And so, this is the last one here, but this is the last one to your halogens. And um, all right, so yeah, the test is going to have things from, like those in the lab and then those from the two Alex's. And remember, I don't really have you memorize too much other than the prefix and I it seems like we're doing a lot, so I think that's fair.